Hello everyone, we just a further to back. Another how to play today. We're looking at how to play this game. Target by Cosmos. I believe there's also international versions. By, uh, no, I'm thinking of a different game. <laughs> uh, it's by Cosmos. It's all about, it's a two-player game. It's all about two nomadic tribes competing for control of the Saharan trade routes. Two players, like I said, it's 12 and up. It takes about an hour to play. That's about right, I would say. And this is uh, your setup. You have three different types of cards in the game, three, uh, three different decks. You have these border cards. There's 16 of them, which form this border on this square. You have the good cards, the goods, and um, what's on? So in a minute, and the tribe cards with this blue back. And the tribe cards, I got them here. There is a bunch of them. You will not likely go through this whole deck in one game. But they have different tribes on them. This is one. This is the Oasis. I'll show you some more. This is the Cap tribe. Um, we have... They're all mixed very well. We got the Well tribe. The Target tribe. This woman. And there is... I think that's it. There's five tribes. I believe, oh, there's one more here, the Camel Riders. So those are the five tribes. And different tribe cards have different things on them, uh, aside from the tribe. You have victory, uh, victory points. These one, this one is worth three victory points. And they also have a cost. This one will cost you one date, one salt, and one gold. This one, uh, two pepper, one salt, one date. And this one actually has an ability on them. Some of them have abilities. This one does not. It's just victory points. This one's two victory points, but it has an ability where you receive a one-time bonus of goods, gold, or victory points when you display this card. Uh, and there's different types of abilities. Like some of them, uh, the abilities on these cards will take effect immediately. Some of them can be used uh, any of your turns like this one in each round in which you get no goods from a good card you receive one good of your choice i'm not sure how you would get no goods but there it is um and some of them like this one are end game points this one you get an extra victory point for every two oasis cards in your display so different cards this one lets you pay less. This one lets you place your target figure on a card occupied by a robber, which I'll explain. Pay fewer goods. Uh, all sorts of different things that you can get. As far as the goods cards are concerned, they are what you would, might expect. They are the goods, the salt, the pepper, and the dates. And there's also some gold. Some of them are two. So this would get me two peppers. This one would get me a pepper and a date. And if I show you another one here, there's another gold. Um, this one, like I said, it's either, it, it gets me both a pepper and the salt. But this one, if you see one like this, that has all three symbols with a slash, this is or I get this or this or this. So it's just one item. You choose which one. It's basically a wild card. It lets you take whatever you want. Uh, aside from gold. And there's one more in here. Which is not in here. Which means it's going to be in here. Which is a victory point. You can get a victory point. Um, so the setup is. Uh, as you see. You're going to put out these border cards. And I actually have a different border as it goes around the board, so it's easy to line them up. They also have uh, numbers on them. Like this one has 12. This one is 13, 14, 15, 16. It goes all the way from 1 to 16. So it's very easy to line them up. I should also point out, they're double-sided. On this side, you just have this symbology, the symbols. But on the other side, especially if it's your first time playing, you can use this side, which actually tells you what each card means. And or you can 
look it up for reference if you want. So it's kind of cool that they do that. All the cards have that. Now, I find that this has just a lot of writing, so it's really hard to follow it. I prefer this simpler side. And so you get that. Now, each player is going to start off with this in their hand. You're going to have... You're going to select one of these sets of targets and these two tribe markers. You got blue, and you also have white over here. And uh, the, whoever has the blue will be the start player, or you can go with whoever last eight dates. Good luck with that, because I'm sure there's not too many people out there. I, I, obviously, some people eat dates, especially older people, or perhaps depending on where you're from, but not a lot of people eat dates, in my experience. <laughs> so, blue would go first in this case. You also have the start player token. And then you have all these other items. You got your goods, your peppers, your dates, and your salt. Each player will get two of each to start. Each player will also get one gold to start. The gold is valuable, but it's hard to find. If you wonder what it says on here, it says... Africa Makuta, whatever that means. I'm sure it means something. And each person starts off with four victory points in the form of a one and a three. There is also fives if you need in the game. And you can always trade up. So that's what you start off with. You also have this robber token, which will always start off in the number one. And what you're going to do on your turn, as a start player, will take one of their targets. What you're going to do, and as I mentioned as well, I forgot to mention this. These cards in the middle, you're going to set up like this. Goods in the corners and the middle, and tribes in here. I set them face down so that you can see that. But they're going to be face up. And it's pretty plain to see what each one is. Which one's tribe, which one is good. And what you're going to do on your turn is, I'll, I'll start with me, is you're going to put your target somewhere on these border cards. Now, you cannot put a target in the corner on these raids. This is only for the robber. And you cannot put the target where the robber is unless you get a specific card, which uh, is out there. There's a tribe card that allows you. It's not here that I can see. But there's a tribe card that you can get that allows you to occupy the same space as the robber. But outside of that, you cannot go on a spot that has a robber. You can also not go on a spot that has another target on it already. So let's say I put one here. And then my opponent's gonna put one, maybe they put one here. Now it's important to note as well, you cannot go in a row or column that your opponent is in. So my opponent cannot go here because I'm already occupying this column. So don't go here. Likewise, I cannot go here. Oops. Because they're in that column. So I'm going to go. I'll go. Now I can go opposite the robber. You cannot go next to, in the same spot as the robber. The robber effectively blocks you from whatever this action or uh, good is for that round. But you can go somewhere else. So I'll go there, my opponent tries to go here. Now I cannot go here because they're here, and I cannot go here because they're here. So that leaves me with here, or here basically, or there. So I will go, I'll go for some salt. And then they're gonna go, maybe they go here, and I'll explain what that means. And then that is that. Now you're gonna take these two tribe markers, and you're going to, uh, I guess, biangulate where these intersect. So these two meet here and these two meet here. My opponent's going to do the same thing. Hopefully this makes sense. So these two meet here and these two meet here. Very nice. Now, uh, starting with me, I will do all my accents and then my opponent will do their accents. And... You can do them in whatever order you want. So, I could take this, you know, the salt and the pepper. Oops. And I would add that to my 
and to my file. I should point out there is a maximum of 10 goods that you can hold at any time and free gold. If at the end of your turn you have more than that, you have to get rid of extra, but you can choose which ones to get rid of. And as soon as I take these actions, I move my pieces off and I can get this. This is the dates. And as soon as I'm done with this one, I take this, put it out of the way. I'll take a date. And um, once you do that, you're going to replace this with the opposite card. So I took a good card. I'm going to put a tribe card here. Then I have this one, which is also a good card. I saw I put a tribe card in there. And that one is, I can choose whatever. I am loaded right now, but I might as well take, I don't know, salt. Hang on. Spam call, in case you're wondering. <laughs> that was the phone ringing. Um, so where was I? So, you know, I've gone, I've done my moves. Oh, I have one more move here, and that is this caravan. This caravan card allows me to take one of these goods cards. And it's more salt. <laughs> Too salt, to be exact. Which makes me too salty here. I have too many goods. I wasn't able to use any. So I'm just going to discard this. And I'm not going to collect this. Because I'm at my max. I would have to get rid of stuff anyway. Because you have a limit of 10. Now my opponent's going to go. You know they're going to get this. Pepper. And salt. I believe it was. And they'll add that to their hand. And then, um, they have, they have this Fanta Morgana, which I'll explain. They're not going to use it, well, maybe they want to use it. Mm. Nah, they can't. Well, they could. The Fanta Morgana, uh, and I saw the other side. Let's see you move one of your markers from one card in the center area to another card. So if you're in a, in a situation where, let's say, they wanted to get this victory point, which they did. But let's say I had my figure here. Well, they can't put their target in the same row, so they wouldn't be able to necessarily get that one. They might if they went here. But no, they couldn't. They can't because they wouldn't be able to biangulate. So... In this case, they could use the, this uh, Fata Morgana to move this over here, for instance. So that's how that Fata Morgana works. It allows you to move one of your uh, markers elsewhere. Now, do they take the victory point or did they move it? And you know what? They're going to move it. They're actually going to use the Fata Morgana and they're going to move this over here. Why? Well, that's two camel riders. And I'll explain that in a bit. But you're going to be trying to get, if possible, a set of four of the same tribe for extra points at the end of the game. You're also going to be uh, trying to get a set of four unique tribes, four different tribes for bonus points at the end of the game. You'll be basically making a, a three by four grid of cards in front of you, which I'll show you in a bit, to try to get these points. Um... So it makes sense for them to do this, and they can afford it. So now they're going to take this. It's two dates and one salt, which they can afford. They'll put that back. And then we'll place that with a try goods card. And then I'll take this one, which is two peppers and a gold. So they gave up a victory point, but they're getting a victory point and two additional victory points on these cards. Also, there's abilities here. What's all with that? Minute, we'll replace this with a goods card. So it says here, immediately after displaying this card for every two empty spaces out of 12 points when you display, you receive a one-time bonus of one goods of your choice. Well, they basically have 10 empty spaces. So they're going to get... five goods out of that as well so they can take you know let's say they take two pepper two dates and a salt so they're getting a bunch of stuff out of that because they have basically nothing in the display so that is an excellent time to get that card 
And the other one is a uh, an end game bonus. It says, at each round it says, if you get at least one pepper from a good card, you will see one more pepper. So if they were to get this card and they take the pepper, they would get a second pepper. You got to keep your eye on these cards throughout the game to see, hey, am I getting something this round? Or is it going to be at the end of the game? Or is it immediate? So anyways, once everyone has taken all their actions, you can flip these face up. Now we have three tribes in one row. Oh, look at that. Gold. Two gold. Oh, my goodness. This is, this would be an interesting round because there's a victory point. There's two gold, not one. And there's a bunch of goods in one row. So there's a, a, me and my opponent are probably going to be trying to block each other or trying to ruin each other. But then we're going to move this guy over here into the pepper. Or sorry, the uh, dates. He's now blocking that. And we continue. The game will end once a player has, one, one of two things happens. A player has 12 cards in the display in front of him. That's the max amount you can have. That will trigger the end of the game. Or once the target, the, the, sorry, the robber, once the robber has gone all the way around the board and ended on number 16 here, this last raid. So let's talk about some of these cards that are around the border. There is two. Uh, of each good, two dates, two pepper, and two salt, which just allows you to collect those goods when you put your target on them. There is this noble. So what happens is, at any point in time, if I collect one of these tribe cards, and I don't have what I need to, to pay for this, I can put it in my hand, like this and save it for later. You can only have one card at a time in your hand. So let's say, let's see if I have a different one, that would be a better example. Like this one has a bunch of more goods. Let's say I don't have any goods, which I do, but we'll just pretend I don't. So I can't afford to get this one, I put it in my hand for later. Later, if I get the goods and I want to buy this one and put it in my display, I have to put my player, my Tuggy, on the Noble. That is the only way, aside from one uh, of the tribe cards, that is the only way that you can take this card and put it in your hand, or you can also discard it if you don't want to use it. Uh, moving along, like I said, these corner ones are just for the robber. There is the trader here. The trader allows me to take any free goods, Let's see, I, I have too many salt and I don't want them. I can trade them in and take one gold. Or I can trade any two goods for any uh, one other good. And this is unlimited, so I can trade another free and get another gold. I mean, it's limited to the point where you can only have free gold at any time. So you can only do that. <laughs> Uh, then there's the Fata Morgana, which I explained, where, you know, let's say I had this marker here and this one here, and I really wanted this, well, let that be a poor example. Let's say I had this, you know, like this, and I was blocked from getting this dollar, and maybe I was blocked from getting this dollar, but I really want this dollar, this gold. Well, I can put my thing here on this Fata Morgana, she can put it. And then she can move her piece, you know, onto this gold, as an example. I don't believe you can move what somebody else already is. Obviously, that would be weird. But you can move it any way you want. So that's what the fact of Morgana does. It allows you to move your piece, your marker, anywhere that you weren't able to get to. Moving along, we have the caravan. Over here, which I'm already on. And this simply allows me to draw a goods card and collect that good. So I get a salt. And then we have tribal expansion. This allows me to collect one of these tribal cards from the deck. And then I can purchase this. A pepper and a buck. I can do that. Or gold. I keep saying a buck. It's a gold. And, um, and that is that. And if I can't afford it and I have nothing in my hand, I can simply put it in my hand. Or I would have to discard it if I can't do either. If I can't afford it and I already have something in my hand and I collect this card, 
I can't afford it because I don't have the pepper in this case. So I really can't, I literally can't afford it. And I have a card in my hand already, so I have to just discard this. So that is that in a nutshell. You're going to go around the table doing all that. I'll explain some additional stuff here in a moment. Again, you start off with four victory points. Two pepper, uh, two pepper, two dates, two salt, and one gold in your hand. And of course, this is going to go back and forth between the start players. And just bear with me a second. I'll show you the what you're trying to do with the tribal card. All right, so at the end of the game, you're going to have, you might have something. This You might not have all these cards. You know, maybe you don't have all these cards. Maybe you only have eight or nine or seven. Who knows how many cards you might have. It depends on how many things you're able to buy and how you play it and what kind of luck you had. A little bit of luck plays into it. But at the end of the game, if you have four goods like this, you're going to have, as you progress through the game and you collect goods, or not goods, tribe cards, as you collect these tribe cards, uh, you're going to be laying them out into a four by three. And you cannot, you know, leave a blank space. You have to put them from left to right, basically, in order. Uh, if, at the end of the game, you have four of the same tribe in one row, you get four victory points. If you have four and they're all different like this, four different tribes, you also get you get two victory points in that case, unless you have a a certain uh, tribe card. That will get you additional points. Now, <clears throat> if you have one like this, which this has a mismatch of tribes, you don't get any additional points. At the end of the game, you're going to add up all of the two points in your hand, all of the two points on these cards, and whoever has the most will win the game. Keep in mind, there are some cards like this one says at the end of the game, you receive one additional victory point for every two well cards in your display. I've only got one, unfortunately, but let's say I had a second one here, I would get an additional victory point for that. And, you know, some of them don't have anything. Some of them are, these are all immediately. This is every round. So there's different actions that take place at different times. But that is the game in a nutshell. There's also an expansion, which I'm hoping to get. We'll see. Uh, it seems pretty cool. It adds some whole new stuff, including water as an additional good. And sand dune cards. That seems pretty interesting. But we won't get into that. That is the game. I think it's really cool. The quality of the components is pretty good. These are just, you know, the cardboard. But they're pretty good. I like the sound and the feel of them. I like the coins. The card quality is just a smooth plastic card to finish. But it's fine. And these are nice wooden figures. Now, there are, if you go to Board Game Geek, Dot com, you can get uh, different tokens which would have metallic coins and metallic victory points and these would actually be like plastic tokens but these are actually you know good quality to me they're, they're fine so that is the game let me know what you think comment like subscribe we'll see you next time more thanks for watching one more little final thing i wanted to mention uh during the game you'll probably run out of goods cards in your stack so what you'll do is you'll just simply take the discard, shuffle it up, and create a new goods pile. You'll probably run out a couple of times because you'll be going through a lot of goods. The five cards, there is a lot of them, so I don't expect anyone to have that problem. But I just wanted to add that in there. Apologize, I forgot to mention it earlier. And I believe I've covered everything. I believe. Yeah. That's that. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.